Hi, this is Bryce with Frostbite Cosplay. Today we're going to go through how to put together our Zenyatta head pattern. The first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and print off the pattern on regular 8.5 by 11 paper. Now, you're going to notice that two sides have dotted lines and two sides have solid lines. Go ahead and cut off the solid lines and then you're going to line that edge up with the dotted lines. And that's going to be a running theme through this pattern. If it's a uh, solid line, it gets cut out. If it's a dotted or dashed line, then it's going to be a reference point. Now you're going to notice that my patterns look a little bit different in the video. That's because these are the raw patterns before we went through and cleaned them up and added the uh, alignment marks and things like that. Now there are a couple of pieces that we've changed in the final pattern. I'll point those out as we get to them in the video. But the, uh, the changes don't affect the build at all. It still goes together and looks the same once it's finished. So what we've got here, except we're going to go ahead and just get everything all taped together. Line it up the best that you can. Now once we've got the whole thing taped together, we're going to go in and cut out the pattern with uh, an X-Acto knife or scissors or whatever is easiest for you. Try to be as precise as you can. The pattern is fairly forgiving, and so uh, a, you know a little bit of deviation isn't a huge deal. But you want to be as as close and precise as you can, just to get as good of a result as you can. Once this is cut out, we're going to transfer it to our foam. Now, for pieces A and B here, we're going to use eight millimeter foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. I like to stagger my foam, and so. I have white 12 millimeter, black 10 millimeter, white 8 millimeter, black 6 millimeter, and so on. So that as I'm grabbing foam when I'm building things, I uh, you know have a better idea of what I'm grabbing just from the stack. It's not necessary. It's just kind of a personal preference. And I do apologize for the webcam. It's going to uh, have a lot of focusing issues throughout this video. It's a new camera that we're kind of getting used to. And I didn't notice until after we'd uh, finished filming that it had been autofocusing on a lot. So we're going to go ahead and trace these patterns out. And take your time, go nice and slow, make sure that it's uh, a good clean trace. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and put some push pins through the pattern to hold it in place. Now on everything you are also going to need a front and a back. And so I like to, as I trace it out, put... A, uh, a little F and B on my P on my pieces, just so that I can keep track of uh, you know which is which, and I can make sure that I've got a mirror for everything. So here we've got A and B. We're gonna go ahead and get traced out. All right, now we're going to switch over to our 6 millimeter, which, like I said, is black. Now, piece E here, this is the only piece that's going to have any cuts that are not 90-degree cuts. And so we're going to kind of give it special attention here just to make sure that everything lines up properly. So we'll go ahead and we'll trace it onto our 6 millimeter foam. Again, being careful not to let it shift or anything. Um... I usually print on uh, 110 weight cardstock. It's a little excessive for patterns, but it makes for a nice sturdy pattern piece. Now these line up against each other, so I'm just going to flip it over on itself and trace it again. That way we uh, only have to cut one piece and there's not a seam down the middle. Piece C is going to be the only one on the 6mm uh, foam that doesn't do that. Now on this, because we have these 45 degree angles, I'm going to take and draw some arrows just so that I can make sure to remind myself if anything happens that uh, that's where those go. Now this one here, piece D, is going to be one of the ones that got changed. As you can see, this one has these big darts in it and the, uh, the final product doesn't. We got done putting it together with the big darts and everything in it and it still just laid completely flat on the foam. So we tried doing it again with the uh, without them went together great and it eliminated one you know and eliminated another seam. So here we've got F that's going to be the chin piece. Go ahead and trace it out here. 
And now C is going to be the one that the only one that doesn't mirror up against itself in the six millimeter. And as you can see, the original one had this dart in the side. For the final product, we want just a sharper curve. So don't worry about that dart there. Now, for cutting things, you want to make sure that you have a sharp blade. I like to use this X-Acto knife. I've got a bulk pack of blades that, from Amazon. These extending blade craft knives, they work great as well, as long as you keep it sharp. It just kind of is personal preference. Personally, I feel like I have better control with the X-Acto knife. So we're going to take and we're going to cut piece E to start with. Again, this has our 45 degree angles. So these are going to go with a 45 degree angle inward. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to hold my knife in my right hand with the blade slanting into the left. And I'm just going to very carefully make a 45 degree angle along this long side of the uh, pattern. There we go. Now I find it easier to make 90 degree cuts if I'm cutting towards myself as opposed to if I'm pushing away from myself or if I'm and I like to hold my blade towards my center line instead of away from it. So we're going to go and roll this piece over. And again, the same thing, a nice 45 degree cut in towards the center of the piece. Now the edges here are 90 degree cuts, so we'll just go ahead and just cut them straight across. And when we pull this out here, you can see we've got these beveled edges that are going to allow us to put the chin piece in and have it come around and curve like we want it to. Now we'll do a bit of a time lapse here. The rest of these we're just going to go ahead and cut them out. As you're cutting things, take your time. Uh, make sure that you're staying on your lines and that you're getting nice, sharp 90 degree edges on everything. Same thing, we're going to go ahead and cut out our pieces on our thicker foam. Again, nice sharp 90 degree curves meeting together in the points. Now when I'm making corners here, you'll notice that I keep arching my hand up. I like to stab straight down into the corner and then relax the blade and make my cut. That way inside the corner is as sharp and close to 90 degrees as I can get it. Now for the ears, we're going to go ahead and cheat. Instead of cutting the circles, I'm going to use my laser cutter and we're going to go ahead and throw some Dallas Fuel logos on my ears because, you know, burn blue, right? So here we go with that and make our cuts. Now obviously this is a very optional piece of equipment. It's not going to hurt anything to go ahead and do the uh, circles by hand and sand them smooth. Um, they should be 18 to 24 millimeters. If you don't want to buy the thick foam like that, you can go ahead and just stack a few pieces of your normal foam. Once everything's cut out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit it with our heat gun. Now, the reason that I do this before I put my pieces together is that when you heat your foam, it shrinks just a little bit. And if you've glued all your pieces together on your seams, then when you hit it with the heat gun and the foam shrinks, it's going to open your seams up a little bit. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through and we're going to heat it up first. That way the foam's already shrunk. And while it's warm, we're going to go ahead and bend it so that it uh, kind of has a pre-curve to it a little bit. And that's just going to make it 
a little bit easier to glue it together and keep my seams straight later. We'll do that with the whole thing here. Now, I'm going to glue things together with barge cement. This is my favorite kind of contact cement. I buy it by the gallon and put it in these dental resin jars. They've got a built-in brush and they work phenomenally well. It comes in quartz. It also comes in little squeeze tubes. Um, just depends on what your needs are going to be. So we'll go ahead and open it up here. And now I'm going to start by doing the darts on all of the pieces. And so. With darts, the biggest thing to th make sure is that when you're putting them together, you get glue down in the dart point. Uh, it's really easy to miss that, especially on the back. As you're putting things together, a lot of times you'll notice there's a dry spot there in the back, and that's going to make it difficult to get a smooth seam. So I'm going to take this piece of scrap foam here, and I'm going to use it as kind of a squeegee to smooth out the glue and to make sure that I've got glue forced down into that crevice. Now we'll go ahead and we'll paint glue on the rest of the piece. Now with contact cement, less is more. I want coats that cover the whole thing, but not that have you know big goop, uh, big goopy spots in them or anything like that. And so we're going to paint our glue on, and then we're going to take foam scraps from where we've cut it out, and we're going to pull that along that edge to kind of smooth everything out. Again, get nice thin coats with with complete coverage. We'll just smooth the edges out with our scrap foam. We're going to go in the darts on all of our different pieces here. All right, once that glue is dried, we're going to go through and we're going to put our pieces together, or close our darts for now. So we're going to press in, being very careful to make sure that the seams line up as well as possible. Uh, sometimes I find that it's easiest to uh, kind of hold the seam open with your fingers and join it with your thumbs to where you're pushing it into kind of a V shape and lining up that top edge and then rolling the rest of it together. So we'll get that all pressed together and ready to go, making sure that it lines up correctly. Just push everything together and make sure that it's joined really well. And then I'm going to flip the whole piece inside out so that as that glue dries just a little bit longer, that way the, uh, the force from the foam is going to be pressing that top edge that's going to show on the final product. And that's going to help to make sure that it stays closed and stays nice and pretty. So we'll do the same thing here. We're going to press it together. Like I said, making for me, sometimes it's easier to make that kind of that V there and push it through. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the uh, pieces together. So A to A, B to B to make our complete pieces. Now on the pattern, you'll notice that there are some dotted lines that go down the centers of these. Those are alignment marks that if you want to mark them on your piece, you can. And that way, as you're going through and putting these pieces together, you know that you're lined up where you're supposed to be and that it's going to work out right.
And don't forget about Part C that's going to have to be pushed together. It uh, uses the thinner foam and seems kind of separate, but it is an important piece for the chin. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, we've got everything ready here. We're going to go in and we're going to attach these edges together. Again, like I said, there are the alignment marks that are uh, marked on the pattern that you can use to make sure that it's lined up correctly. But we're going to go in and we're going to push these pieces together being very careful to make sure that they're joined up correctly. And again, take it nice and slow. Make sure that your seams stay nice and pretty because it's far easier to have a straight seam now than it is to, you know, try to make massive corrections with sanding and filling later. Press that seam together, make sure that it's nice and tight. We're going to flip it inside out and let it sit again, same as we did last time. Now we'll take A and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line it up. We're going to work our way back very carefully, making sure that that seam is well aligned. We're going to flip it inside out again very carefully. Same thing for C. All right, now we're going to go ahead and assemble the chin. And so we've got pieces D, E, and F here. Now E is going to wrap around F, like so, and then D is going to jump in on top of it here. Put our glue down. Now we only want to work on one side at a time. So I'm going to do the half of E that goes up against F for now, and not the side that goes against D. Now while that dries, we're going to line up C and e, or C and D. Now if you look at D, you'll notice that there's an alignment mark that's where the uh, face plate matches in. It's a little uh, a little square that comes down in there. You want to go just barely past that when you're lining these up. Just, you know, maybe two millimeters past or so. It, it shouldn't be very far. All right, once your glue is dry, we'll go ahead and press this together, being very careful to line it up here on the angle. The 45 degree angle makes it a little bit tricky. It's kind of just a practice thing to get these uh, seams lined up well. Go ahead and line them all up. Make sure everything's pushed in well. Now we're going to line this up, and like I said, this is going to go just into that uh, just into that box. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do up these other sides here with the glue. And this is going to give us that nice three-dimensional kind of jutted out chin that Zenyatta has. Now if you need to, you can go ahead and use a, a rotary tool to clean up the seam just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start assembling the face. So we'll take the chin, 
and this is going to go in to where part A is going to overlap just a little bit on the edges coming down into those boxes that are traced out on the pattern. So we'll go ahead and put some glue around the edge. You don't need to go very far in. You don't want to stick it in too deep. But it is going to go on the outside edge there. And now on the face, we're going to go on the inside of A so that that'll all slot in together. And again, you don't need to go super high, but just kind of about the width of the brush or so is fine. We'll let that dry. All right, so I've given that a couple of minutes, glue's dry to the touch. Now we're gonna go ahead and join it together. And so I'm gonna line up the center seam on C with the center seam on A. I feel like that's the easiest way to make sure that it holds together. And then we're gonna just pull this down into that box that we've laid out. Same thing over here. We're just gonna pull that down into that box on D. There we go. And then we'll press around all of the different sides to keep it in place. And there we go, chin is in place. Now let's go ahead and put A and B together. Now as you can see, we've got our uh, marks here that show where everything is going to go together with uh, A, B, and C. So we'll go ahead and we'll put glue down on that. B could actually be cut down quite a bit. Um, it doesn't need that big ledge there, but uh, it's a little bit easier to cut than it would be to try to trace around. And so for now, I've left it. We'll go ahead and we'll follow those lines where it's going to uh, overlap. And we'll come in and we'll put our glue down on the inside lip again. Going all the way around the helmet. let that dry and once it's dry we're gonna put it together now again the easiest way to do this in my opinion is to line up the back seams so we're gonna line that up right there and then we're gonna just kind of trace it around until we get to where we can slide it in where it needs to be so we'll just kind of slowly push it into place being very careful because that glue is gonna be pretty grabby We'll go ahead and we'll line that up, line that up on the jaw, and we'll push everything into place. Now we're going to flip it over to the other side. You can see it kind of stuck just a little bit. We can pop that off a bit. Again, we're going to follow it through. Just lining everything up. I'll make sure that it's pressed into place well and that everything's well seated. Okay, now for the sides of the head, we've got the ears that we laser cut or, you know, we're cut out of the bigger foam. And those are going to go here on the back of the head. But for the bolts and things that make him up, we're going to use these foam dowels. Now, the first one we're going to use is this big 48 millimeter one. And so we're going to take our extending box cutter here, because a normal X-Acto knife be hard to cut through this. This way we can kind of go all the way through and saw it down at once, which is going to make it a little bit cleaner. Now 
and I'm going to cut off two one inch sections using my, my cutting board here to line it up. Now we're going to take this 36 millimeter one. We're going to cut about an inch and a half segment. And we're going to cut that in half again. So we've got two three quarter inch segments. We're also going to need this 36 millimeter to put the uh, center pieces on our bigger uh, 48 millimeter one. So I'm going to cut two half inch segments here to go and cap that off. So I'll cut a one inch one and we'll split it in half. There we go. Now finally we've got this small 24 millimeter one and we're going to cut two one inch segments of it. Now we've gone in, we've drawn on where those go. If you look at the patterns, you can see that we've got that traced out for you. The ear, I only did the back slope, but once you get the rest of the helmet together, it's pretty easy to see where the ear goes. There's really only one place that it'll fit. So we're going to put our barge on these things. Now the 48 millimeter ones are actually going to have to have the... Uh, glue put on both sides because we're going to put the uh, the littler dowel on there too. We'll go ahead and get our glue in there. Once that's dry, we'll go ahead and attach everything. So we'll put our ears into place. Thirty-six mil, the one inch thick, thirty-six millimeter. And the uh, maybe just a little thinner than one inch, twenty-four millimeter. Take our forty-eight, our half inch, thirty-six. Put that on there, and that's going to make up the side of the head. We'll go ahead and put that on the other side here as well. And there we have it. Now, there's a lot of options here. On our original helmet, we cut out all of these individual circles. We put a layer of Plastizode in them with lights behind it to uh, give a, a nice lit up panel. For the uh, ones that we're making for PAX South this year, we're just going to indent because they've got to be done pretty quick. We don't have a lot of time. And so we're taking a Dremel tool that uh, had the drum on the sanding bit pulled forward a little bit. And we're going to use that to engrave the, uh, the circles. And so we'll go ahead and we'll just hit that with it real quick just to cut a small trench. That way we've got a, uh, a marker where the uh, rings are, but we don't have to cut all the way through. And that's totally gonna be up to you how you wanna do it. Um, either way will work. For the eyes, we're going to take our X-Acto knife and we're going to very carefully cut these out. Now the vision in this helmet is a little bit limited. And so you may find that you want to, uh, you want to expand the eyes out, make them a little bit bigger. Um, 
put you know filters or fabric or things behind them to block them out just kind of however you want to run the eyes let me get that marked out there we are the edge of that there we go okay and there we have our finished Zenyatta helmet ready to wear well ready to uh, sand the seam smooth and then seal I still seal my stuff with Plasti Dip there's a lot of good options out there but here is our final product once we've had it sealed and painted and everything um, it's a great helmet it looks really good and it's simple to build which is nice. Now for Pack South, we're going to customize some of these to uh, kind of trick them out a little bit. Uh, looking at things like a uh, Diva Yada, Arisa Yada, Texas Yada, things like that. And so just go nuts, have fun. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what people can do with this pattern. We'd love to see a bunch of casuals and yadas running around using the hashtag Tranquility2020. Um, because these are a fun costume for those times when you don't want to wear something big. Maybe go a little bit casual and uh, have a good time. So thanks for joining me, and I hope that this has been helpful.